Hey Fairfax County, it's Feel Good Friday. I'm Marissa Daly. Today we're at the Lucy Burns Museum at the Workhouse Arts Center to explore an incredible story of resilience and determination in the fight to secure women's right to vote. Hello, my name is Laura McKee. I'm the director of the Lucy Burns Museum here at the Workhouse Arts Center in Lorton, Virginia. The museum has been open uh, since last January and we opened it to celebrate the centennial of the 19th Amendment when women got the right to vote. The workhouse is delighted to be able to present the story of the suffragist because in 1917, uh, 72 women were imprisoned here at the workhouse for, can you believe it, picketing the White House, simply picketing the White House. We start the suffrage story here at the workhouse uh, museum here, talking about after the turn of the century that a group of women, uh, spearheaded by the National uh, Women's Party, that began to uh, make a real difference. Uh, the group that was headed by Lucy Burns and Alice Paul felt that it was more important to work at the national level and to get the Congress to pass an amendment to the Constitution which gave women the right to vote. Um, they call themselves silent sentinels because um, they did nothing but stand in front of the White House carrying banners. At first, the president uh, basically ignored the women picketing in front of his house, the White House, uh, but over time he became more and more concerned about them and finally uh, said to the commissioners of the District of Columbia that he wanted to get rid of those women. And so it was at that point in the summer of 1917 that arrests began. At first, the women were taken to the D.C. jail. However, it didn't make any difference because women continued to picket the White House. And it was because of that that the uh, court in the in district decided to send the women to the workhouse in Occoquan. But it was in, in November of 1917 that the most drastic sentences were issued. That event became a national um, embarrassment because the women, when they were brought here, were treated abysmally. And a number of those women decided that they wanted to resist their imprisonment by going on hunger strikes. Two of the women that we, we honor here at the uh, museum were involved with the hunger strikes, and that is uh, Lucy Burns and Dora Lewis. We have large, larger-than-life statues of these two women honoring their um, commitment to the cause. They decided um, to have them fed um, through a, a tube down their uh, nose into their stomach. This force feeding was very uncomfortable, both during the insertion of the tube and also when the raw food went directly into the stomach. And the memoirs of the women who were involved in this give us graphic descriptions of how awful it felt. However, uh, they continued and were willing to die uh, for the right of, to have the vote. The lawyers for these women finally were able to get the district, uh, the, North, the federal district court in Alexandria to um, issue a writ of habeas corpus and bring these women into the court. When they saw how bad their physical condition was, the women were released. However, that event is called in, uh, in the literature, the Night of Terror. These stories are told here in the museum in detail. We have photographs and short biographies of every single woman who was imprisoned here. We have statues uh, and, and lots of information about the suffrage movement, especially what went on here at the uh, Occoquan Workhouse here in Lorton. We welcome visitors to the museum and encourage you to check our website for opening hours. 
The pandemic has caused some changes in our hours and so do before you plan a visit. Uh, take, a, take a look at the, the website that you see the address below.